Hi guys, welcome back. After the first lecture, we're now going to have the first masterclass. I want you to meet Sarah from Newmark. Hi, Sarah. Newmark is the biggest uh, developer of each equipment, if you have not known before. And Sarah is so nice to talk a little bit about the history of the company, as well as she will present a very specific product to you that I think you're all going to enjoy. So have fun. Thanks Thank so you, much. Sarah. Thank you, guys. Okay, so first of all, welcome, and I have to say a big congratulations to all of you, every single one of you, for getting this far already. You're in Ibiza, you're here, you're here for two weeks, enjoy yourself, and I hope that what I'm going to talk to you about today can be a little bit inspiring and, and help you on your journey that you're going to be on over the next few days. My name is Sarah, as you know already, and I'm the International Sales Manager at Newmark. Um, basically, I look after our products across all of Europe, Middle East, Africa and India and work with different artists and retailers, we're promoting our products, selling our products. Um, and it's great fun to be a part of the DJ industry. So what am I going to talk about today? I'm going to talk about creative performance. I'm going to talk about how you can express yourself musically. Um, I'm going to talk about some of the innovation in DJing and DJ equipment. We're also going to have a bit of a chance to geek out and go a little bit more in with some products as well. Um, and we're also going to fit in a demonstration where I'm going to attempt to show some of my skills to you guys, which uh, I'm a little nervous about, to be honest. So let's get started um, about performance and interaction. I was really trying to kind of think, um, you know, how you get this across. I think one thing to remember, the reason why every single one of you is probably here and wants to be a DJ is because you love music. You love music, it's part of your life, you know, it defines your friends, what you do, what you're into. And I think it's important to remember that when you're in a club or when you're performing, everybody there loves music too. You're all on the same level, you know. And when we have music that we love, we want to share it. You know, music is definitely a shared experience. So you have to remember that as well, like everyone wants to share that experience. And we really want to connect with our audience, you know, it's great when you can play something and someone else really feels that vibe, you know, you see the bass face and you're like, yeah, I'm connecting, you know, because we want to see that reaction, you know, you want to see everyone with their hands in their air, you want to see people dancing, you want to see people enjoying themselves and that kind of raw connection that you have, you know, is a key part of the performance and you should always keep all of these things in mind that you've all got this in common with your audience and, and with each other. So, you know, enjoy the performance, enjoy sharing your music, enjoy sharing your love and your passion with the audience and let that really come across every time that you perform. So let's talk about that when you're actually performing and expressing yourself. You know, one thing that I think, you know, always astounds me is we are all individuals in this room, but we're part of a seven billion population worldwide. You know, but that's not seven billion clones, that's seven billion individuals, all with their own passions and all with their own loves. But do you know what? Music is the only universal language which translates across all of those seven billion people. And I think that's what makes it so special, is you can find someone that you can't speak one word to. You have no way to communicate with them, but you can share some music together and immediately you're on the same wavelength and you can communicate. And that's what, another thing that makes it so special. You know, amongst all of these people though, these seven billion people and everyone who loves music, how do you really find your identity? How do you know who you are musically? How do you express that, you know? And it comes down to a few things, I think. You know, just as your friend circles, like how do you define yourself in your personal life and your individualism? You know, it comes from um, selection. So it might be your selection of friends who you choose to hang out with. You know, in music, it's, it's which, which tunes you actually choose to play, you know? It could be through style, so I mean, personally, that might be how you choose to dress, how you decide to have your hair, but you know, in music, it could be the genre which you decide to operate within, or even the kind of tempo or, or particular style. And also in the performance, so performance, personally, is how you choose to carry yourself, how you act day to day, how you are. But you know, I think it's important not to miss that out in musically as well. Let your performance show who you are personally as well, so people can really feel that when you're playing. And you know what, we're really lucky these days. Because never before has technology been at a stage where we're able to perform in so many ways. 
you know, the DJ is no longer the guy that's standing at the back of the room, you know, with a record deck, and then someone coming over going, excuse me, have you got, you know, it's, it's evolved into, into something much, much cooler, much more creative. The DJ now is the artist, you know, the DJ now is the performer. Quite often the DJ is also the producer, you know, and so if you're making your own music as well, especially, how do you perform that live? You know, you're not, you're not um, stuck in doing it one way. There's so many different tools available to you to, to perform. You know, people do acoustic sets. They do sets with the band. They do sets with the DJ. And combinations of all of those as well. And then, of course, when it comes to DJing, you know, you're not stuck with one thing there either. You know, do you use CDDX? Do you use your USB stick? Do you use vinyl? Do you use a controller? And then if you use a controller, I would know there's quite a few of them. <laughs> So how do you decide what you want to use? And you know, it's really exciting how much DJ technology has evolved over the last 20 years. I mean, if you really think about it, there's been so many huge developments. Although the DJ category, the DJ industry as a whole, is still you know, quite conventional in some ways, that you, know, you need at least two decks, maybe four now, and music and a mixer, and that might be combined in software now. Actually, the amount of features that are available and different things that you can interact with, different software platforms, different hardware, you know, you can be a lot more creative these days. You know, obviously, I'm here from Newmark, and um, Newmark, we've really been part of this DJ evolution as well. You know, we've seen things grow over the 40 years that we've been in business. Um, Jack O'Donnell is a really passionate guy. He used to be a DJ himself. Uh, he's run the company since 1991 and really helped with his vision and all the DJs and people we work with to bring a lot of things to the market. And we're never scared to really adopt and embrace new technologies because it's so important to kind of stay with the trends and experiment with different things just like you would musically. And this doesn't start now, you know. As I said here about this product, the DM1775, with the first built-in sampler. Now everyone's going crazy these days over sample decks and stuff like this in their software. But this came out in the 1980s. You know, when, when, when samplers were cool and, and, you know, that was kind of revolutionary then to be able to be playing and to be able to sam like, play samples during your set was like, wow, this is amazing, you know. Um, now we take it for granted. We have products like this as well, the CD uh, 5020. It was the first twin CD player. It didn't used to have them before and twin CD players are still used a lot these days and uh, it was really revolutionary at the time. And we didn't stop there either. Things like the HDCD1, we'd already thought about, you know, people maybe want to go have a larger selection of music, you know. Even at this time, this is in the, in the 90s, people are having more and more music collections, mixing different genres. And, you know, you have this huge record case or you have this huge CD case. And uh, we decided to install a hard drive as well. So you could actually store all of your music on the CD player as well and, and, and recall it on. And uh, when iPods were like uh, crazy, crazy popular, we brought out the first ever iPod controller where you could, uh, you and your friend could just plug your iPhone, or oh, your yeah, iPhones weren't around then, it was iPods, and you could basically have a, have a battle between your iPods with a DJ controller. It was a fun idea. But even something like that, without knowing it, by us doing something that was then much more accessible, we suddenly brought DJing to a whole new generation of people. And I think this is another thing where we're lucky now, you know, a lot of music over the years from recording and making, DJing, had always been a little bit elitist. You need to have money, you need to have a big expensive setup, you need to know people, you need to do this, you need to do that. Never has music been so accessible. And if you're passionate enough, and if you practice enough and you're good enough, it doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, how much money you have, all of these technologies are much more accessible to everyone. And I personally think that's a fantastic thing because it just brings so much freshness back into music and to DJing. We also did this product as well, the CDX. The motorized platters now are, are seen as the standard thing you'd expect on a premium controller, but we were actually the first guys to do this. And it was really quite pioneering technology at the time. No one else was doing anything like this. And no one said, it, it's not going to be possible. You can't, you can't get the same feel on a, on a platter that you, you would normally, you know, and all the DJs like it will never, it's never going to work. 
you know, I'm never going to stop using vinyl. <laughs> but you know, things change, things do evolve, and I think not being afraid of that change, just embracing it and trying different things, you know, the same way that we do in technology is the same with DJing and with making music, you know, just try it and see what happens. And we've kind of always tried to continue that innovative edge um, with other products like NS7, which became uh, one of our best-selling products and really, really popular for all of the um, like DMC guys and the controllerists because it was a uh, really uh, real feel vinyls. Um, IDJ Pro, which was an iPad controller, where you could plug in your iPad and have like touch screen effects while you're DJing and stuff. Um, the Edge, which was the thinnest controller that exists, is about the size of an iPad. You can just shove it in your bag and go. And uh, the Orbit, which is something that I'm going to be talking to you a little while today, which is uh, the world's first wireless DJ controller. But amongst all of these products now, uh, Newmark has about just over 50% market share of the global DJ market with all the products that we do. And we want to keep innovating, keep inventing, keep trying new things, and keep delivering them to you. Because if we can make what you do more fun, easier to do, faster to do, sounding better, then that's what inspires us to keep trying things. So I just wanted to show you a quick example of kind of all of this revolution. So if you, if you think back those 20 years where you had a couple of record decks and a mixer, you know, and, and DJing was basically, you know, if you could beat match, it was just about, you know, where, where tune selection, being able to beat match and being able to just crossfade between the two, and then you're good. You're good. You know, and when you look at something like this now, this is the um, NS7 II. And, you know, something like this now, you've got uh, the motorized platters with the real vinyl, you've got um, MPC pads like on the Akai MPC, which are touch sensitive. Um, something which I think is really cool is all of the knobs on here are all touch sensitive, capacitive touch, so you can do instant EQ kills and things like this just by touching it. So obviously when you're in the middle of a performance, all of these tools are really, really cool to see. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you a quick video of a German DJ that does some work with us, and uh, he's going to be doing some DJing, but He's going to be using this controller, so every time you see him press something or touch something, he's manipulating the music, but he's doing it in a way that's completely unconventional from traditional, just crossing from tune to tune, so check this out.
Cool. <laughs> so you kind of get the idea with something like that, you know, he's, he's performing, he's DJing, but completely in a, in a different way than what you might expect as the standard. So this is what I want to get you thinking about now, is doing something a little bit non-standard. So I'll get on to what I'm talking about today, which is the Newmark Orbit wireless handheld DJ controller. So a little bit more about it. Um, Basically, it utilizes wireless MIDI. So it still works over MIDI, so you don't have to worry about latency times or any issues like that. And because it's wireless MIDI, it means that it works with any MIDI software. You've got some cool things on here where you've basically got these accelerometers. So when you move it as well, you can actually access controller um, settings from this as well. So you imagine you've got it set on a filter setting, and you can be going, do your filter sweep just by moving it around. So it becomes a really kind of visual tool as well. Where, you know, you can have fun with these, you can use more than one of them at the same time as well. So you can, you know, you can have a lot of fun, you can move it around. It's got um, 16 different pads over four banks. You've got plenty of different options about controls. Um, you've also got the wheel in the middle, which you can use like a crossfade, or you can use it for volumes, for EQs, basically anything at all. Um, I've put on here as well that you can actually wear it, you know, if you want to. You could strap it to yourself, maybe strap it around your waist while you're DJing, whatever you like. The, the fact is that because it's so small and compact, it makes a great visual tool while you're performing. You know, quite often the DJ's kind of stuck there and, you know, these days you've got your, your USB stick in here and you're trying to make yourself look busy or you've got your laptop up and, you know, sometimes the crowd, again, going back to those first slides, can feel a little bit disconnected to what's going on, you know, you have to kind of make an effort to communicate with them, you know, I am here, like, see me. But something like this is a really cool way, maybe not all the way through your set, but a really cool way to kind of do something which the crowd can really see and be like, wow, cool, what's that? So, I mean, just to give you an idea, I've just got um, a load of screenshots here from different software that this could work with. So, when you get one of these, you know, it comes with its own sort of very basic software, which I'll show you in a sec. But you can use this with Serato, you can use this with Traktor, you can use this with Ableton, you can use it with Virtual DJ, you can use it with any program which accepts MIDI messages basically. So you could even use it to control lighting and video as well. So even if you were just doing a standard DJ set but you had someone VDJing for you, you know, there's so many options with it. Uh, I mean, quite frankly, you could even launch a rocket with it because... <laughs> You know, when you, when you see them blow off a block of flats or launch a rocket, that's all MIDI messages as well. So I, I'd probably not advise it. I don't know if we've, who we've got in the house, but, you know, global relations and stuff. No launching rockets today, please. But uh, very cheesy, but uh, maybe it would even uh, help you launch your career. So, um, yeah, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually just going to switch over to the software that I was just talking about. There we go. So, I'll come around here so you can see a little bit better. But basically, this acts as a, a visual display for everything you're doing on screen. So you have all your standard play and pause, and skip back tracks, rewind. You have uh, different cue points that you can, that you can set up. Um, you have different loop functions as well for looping in and out um, and playing different parts. You also have uh, an effects page as well with some different um, effect settings on it as well. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna hit play, and I'm gonna have a play around, and you'll be able to see on the screen what I'm pressing, and you'll be able to hopefully hear with your ears what's, what's coming out. So uh, apologies in advance for any clangers, but let's have some fun, shall we?
can actually use more than one effect at the same time as well, so if you wanted to. A breakdown section, do a kill EQ and do a filter. It's a lot of fun, but I'm not a DJ. I want to show you this and just see some of the things which are actually possible with these things. So let me just skip back over here. And uh, here we go. <laughs> MTI seminar is where we talk about the fundamentals of innovation and how they relate specifically to music technology. The Orbit project has been very fun. We were given these devices and told in two weeks we had to come up with something. Today we're doing a competition to see who comes up with something cool for these little mini controllers called Newmark Orbits. <laughs> The Orbit itself is meant to be a wireless MIDI controller. We incorporated uh, controlling video, controlling audio, um, controlling instruments, and controlling actually lights on the interface. take a bunch of people and sample them and to basically have a, a MIDI control like a MIDI controller for people. So I filmed everybody and recorded them singing the 12 steps of the chromatic scale. So each video is controlled from a low, a medium and a high note. concept was to make the orbit into an electronic instrument which you can play melodies, play chords and play beats with those ingredients to make your own song. My project was um, just a DJ set. Uh, to really use it as the wireless DJ capabilities that it has and to show them off and be able to create a seamless mix while adding in effects, while being able to crossfade, and basically do everything I would do standard behind the set of turntables. For my Orbit project, um, I use a video game. And with Orbit, we're trying to control the game as well as the sound of the game. <laughs> Our Orbit project is called um, the Rule of Three. We are three people. We have three orbits and three computers. We have performance, we have music, we have visuals. The goal is to transmit this feeling like very energetic thing and very impressive. I started out with the idea of what could one person do with one controller? Uh, because the possibilities of the Orbit are, are really endless. So my idea was to be able to manipulate audio and video within one controller. They make it look easy, right? 
No, they, they, they all had an orbit for two weeks, and I mean, it was a two-week project that they worked solidly on, just working around ideas. But it really kind of gives you an example of all of the different ways you can be creative with, with something like this. And as I said, you know, what I'd like you to get out of this is not just, you know, about this product or about everything we do, but really, like, that, don't be scared to try something a bit different, you know. Let your individual individual personalities show through when you're mixing and when you're performing and really just aim to find ways to really connect with your audience because you know they're the real judges at the end of the day you know you're all here because you're very talented at what you do you know whoever wins this will have worked extremely hard and you know will be very deserved but all of you here are winners to have got this far so you know you're all just as likely to be as successful as each other and just make sure that you go away from here and really be inspired to just be as creative as possible and to really let you shine because you are what got you here. So um, I just wanted to say uh, to everyone just um, good luck in the competition. Um, I'm sure you're all going to be great. Make sure you get everyone dancing and try your best in all the challenges. And right now, you know, my name is Sarah Yule. And Yule, in some languages, does mean Christmas. So I guess this is my time to be Santa come early and to give you all some presents. Now, it doesn't just stop with the, uh, with the orbit. You know, we're in Ibiza. And Ibiza is what? Ibiza is the party capital of the world, right? So each one of you, in addition to getting an orbit uh, by Newmark, I'm also going to give you one of these, which is an ion party starter, which is a portable Bluetooth speaker with built-in LED disco lights. The hotel, I know, the hotel is going to hate me, right? <laughs> After party at everyone's tonight. So um, if you come and see me, everyone gets one of these each from us as a little present. So thank you all for your time and good luck. Let's do this.